Greetings once again, everyone. It is I, Brother Scott, bringing you another Daily Baptist Bread Devotional. Amen. And I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And he is the only one that can save your soul from dying in your sin and burning in hell fire. So hope you'll trust him today as your Savior. All right, so let us get started. Today is Friday, July 5th. Amen, July 5th. And today's topic is, are you asking for it? <laughs> are you asking for it? Hmm. And the author of today is K.M. That is short for K.M. is uh, Ken McComas, uh, Ritman, Ohio. Ken McCormis, Ritman, Ohio. <clears throat> and the verse today is from Numbers 3223B. And it says, And be sure your sin will find you out. Who? Yeah. <laughs> One day our sin will find us out. But if you're saved and trust Jesus, you have eternal life. But uh, God will still judge believers on what they, on their, uh, time here on earth, how they spent their time serving the Lord, whether they served the Lord or didn't, and then uh, any rewards that we have will be burnt up, and <laughs> we will probably not have many rewards to cast down at Jesus' feet, but hopefully we'll have something, <laughs> and we're not standing there and looking all embarrassed and stuff while everybody else is casting down rewards and at Jesus' feet, and we're just standing there and, and have nothing. <laughs> Ouch. So, are you asking for it? And be sure your sin will find you out. Numbers 32, 23b. And he says here, Many Christians complain and say God's way is hard, but God says that the transgressor's way is hard. See Proverbs thirteen fifteen. So, let's go there. Proverbs thirteen fifteen. <clears throat> All right. Proverbs 13 and verse 15 says, uh, Good understanding giveth favor, but the way of transgressors is hard. So, good understanding giveth favor, but the way of transgressors is hard. Hmm. So again, many Christians complain and say God's way is hard. Yeah. But God says that the transgressor's way is hard. And we just read Proverbs 13.15, where it said, See Proverbs 13.15, so we just read that. And we continue on, it says, man, man is prone to blame another rather than admit he is wrong. Yeah, <laughs> how often do we blame uh, the other person? This has been going on way back in the, since the Garden of Eden, where Eve, uh, or Adam blamed Eve, and then Eve blamed the devil. <laughs> so... And it's been going on ever since. Blaming other people, but won't take responsibility for your own actions. Ooh, yikes. So again, man is prone to blame another rather than admit he is wrong. When God confronted Adam with his sin, he blamed Eve. Yeah, just talking about that. Eve blamed the serpent. Yep, we just talked about that. Cain refused to accept responsibility by asking, Am I my brother's keeper? Hmm. Men ought to stop blaming God for their circumstances. Yeah, let's stop blaming God for our circumstances because we only get ourselves in these situations. God has nothing to do with it. We tend to wander away from Him and get ourselves into trouble. And we have nobody to blame but ourselves. I have nobody but to blame but myself. Amen. So, let's stop blaming others. While it may be true God brought the circumstances in which they find themselves, they left God no alternative. Right. They were determined to have it their way, or no way at all. Right. How often do we determine to have it our own way, and not God's way? Or it's no way at all. Oh God, if you don't do things my way, I'm walking. <laughs> How often do we say that? Our generation is asking for trouble. We're playing with fire. We can't escape without a burn. Ouch. <laughs> Would you set yourself on fire? I doubt it. This preacher was in a church for a revival meeting when a terrible tragedy struck. 
The newspapers carried the story something like this. Family of four die instantly when their car crashes, crashes the rear of a tractor trailer. When 24 uh, pallbearers were lined up in the church waiting to bear the bodies of the four victims to the silent city of the dead, one man confessed that the pallbearers wouldn't need to have been there if he hadn't rebelled against God and asked for trouble. Mm. The pastor had beat the undertaker the pastor had uh, beat the undertaker to his door but he insisted on pursuing the downward course until god used drastic means to turn him back many would say with the poet backward turn backward backward turn backward oh time in your flight make me a child again just for tonight Time awaits for no one. Are you asking for it? <laughs> yeah, are you asking for it? Am I asking for it? All right, and be sure your sin will find you out. <laughs> Yikes. Ouch. <laughs> All right, well, that was a uh, lovely convicting devotional for today. So let us stop complaining that God's way is hard because his way is easy. And the way of transgress, uh, the transgressor's way is hard. So the way of transgressors is hard. Not God's way. God's way is easy, but we tend to make it hard because we don't want to listen to him or obey him. We want to just half listen to him, half obey him. But half obedience is not really obedience at all. <laughs> so let us be in full obedience. Mm. All right. Well, that being said, I will end the devotional part. And now let us get into the Bible reading, and we are in Acts chapter 14. So let us go to Acts 14, if you have your Bible and there's some place where you can read along and follow along, I recommend doing so, amen? And if you're in a car driving or at work, listen to this on your phone at work. If you're working at a job where you're not going to get in trouble, that is, <laughs> Like you're on a break or something, I wouldn't uh, recommend listening to it while you're on the clock and working, because that's not uh, good either, unless you're at a job where you can do something like that. Like you're in a stock room or something and are able to do that, maybe. <laughs> Alright, well, let us get into chapter 14 of the Bible on Acts chapter 14. Alright, so here we go. Verse 1 says... And it came to pass in Iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews, and so spake that a great multitude, both of the Jews and also of the Greeks, believed. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil affected against the brethren. Hmm. Long time, therefore, abode they speaking boldly in the Lord which gave testimony unto the word of his grace, and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. But the multitude of the city was divided, and part held with the Jews, and part with the apostles. And when there was an assault made both of the Gentiles and also of the Jews with their rulers to use them despitefully and to stone them, they were, uh, where, they were aware of it and fled unto uh, Lystra and Derbe, cities of Lyconia, and unto the region that lieth round about. And there they preached the gospel. Amen. There they preached the gospel. And there sat a certain man at Lystra, in, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked. Then, or, excuse me, the same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beheld, beholding him, and perceiving that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand upright on thy feet. And he leaped and walked. Amen. And when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voice, saying, In the speech of Laconia, the gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. And they called Barnabas Jupiter, and Paul Mercurius because he was the chief speaker. Then the priest of Jupiter, which was before their city, brought oxen and garlands unto the gates, and would have 
done sacrifice with the people, which, uh, when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of, they rent their clothes and ran in among the people, crying out and saying, Sirs, why do ye, uh, why do ye these things? We are, we also are men of like passions with you, and preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities and unto the living God, which made heaven and earth and the sea and all thing and all things that are therein who in times past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. Nevertheless, he left not himself without witness, in that he did good, and gave us rain from heaven, and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. Amen. And with uh, these sayings, uh, scarce retained they the people, uh, that they had not done sacrifice unto them. And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium, who persuaded the people, and having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, uh, supposing he had been dead. Howbeit, as the disciples stood round about him, he rose up and came into the city, and the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derbe. And when they had preached the gospel to the sit to that city, and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples, and exhorting them to continue in the faith, and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. And when they had ordained them elders in every church, and had prayed with uh, fasting. They commanded them, uh, commended them to the Lord, on whom they believed. And after that, uh, and after they had passed throughout um, Pisidia, they came to Pamphylia. Uh, uh, yeah, Pamphylia. And when they had preached the word in Perga, they went down into Attalia, and th uh, thence sailed to Antioch, from whence they had been recommended to the grace of God for the work which they fulfilled. And when they were uh, come and had gathered the church together, they rehearsed all that God had done with them, and how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. And there they abo abode long time with the disciples. Amen. All right. Well, a lot of traveling Paul and Barnabas did, going in... Going on their missionary journey, amen, <laughs> going around preaching the gospel to every creature and every nation and tongue and tribe, amen, and that's what we need to be doing, going out and telling people about Jesus, and hope you're doing that, amen, if you're saved, and if you're not saved today, I hope and pray that you'll trust Jesus as your Savior, and He will wash away all your sin, hallelujah, amen. All right, well, that will wrap it up for today's devotional and Bible reading. And let me give you today's uh, evening reading. I haven't been giving them to you. Sorry about that. I'm just rushing off here without giving you the evening reading. So today's evening reading is from Job 30 and 31. Um, let's see here. Actually, let's, I'm not sure if I gave you yesterday's, but yesterday's was Job 28 and 29. So... If I didn't give you yesterday's, I apologize about that. So yesterday's was Job 28 and 29, and today is Job 30 and 31. So you can read from 28 to 31 today. Amen. If you are able to, or if you're doing your own Bible study and Bible reading, uh, please continue that. Amen. So until next time, this is Brother Scott signing off, and Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow for tomorrow's topic which is, how's your behavior? Oh, how's your behavior? Hmm. Yikes, that sounds like another tough topic. So we had today, are you asking for it? And tomorrow is, how's your behavior? Question mark. Well, stay tuned for that. And we'll see you, Lord willing, next time. So have a great and wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye for now.